Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, we're going to be making this interactive fridge magnet using the machine learning library ml5.js. This tutorial is my attempt to recreate a piece called Magnet Poetry by my friend Leah Niceberg. I will link her stuff down below so you can check out her version as well. We'll be using the machine learning library called ml5.js, which recently released their 1.0 version. So I'm very excited to be using it. Let's click get started. And there is a bunch of different models that we can use. The one that we're going to be using today is called hand pose. So let's just go there. On the website, you can read the description of the model, what are the different functionalities, and you can also look at the example sketch. And then you can just open it here. And this is very easy for you to get started because if you click run, and there you go, super easy. So you can start working with your piece based on their pre-made sketch. But what I'm gonna do today is that I'm gonna walk through how this sketch is made. So let's start with that. First, what we want to do is that we want to get a video input from the webcam. So I'm going to declare a variable called video. And then inside setup, we're going to set video to a function called create capture. And create capture can capture both video and audio, but because we're only going to do video from the webcam, I'm going to pass in an argument called video. And then let's click run. And here what we have is a video that is displaying outside of the canvas because this create capture creates a new HTML element. So actually what I want to do is that I want this video to display inside the canvas. So first what I'm going to do is that I'm going to hide the video that you see right here using the function hide. And then how about we reset the size of the canvas to 640 to 480. Inside draw, we're going to use a function called image to actually display the video on the canvas. So what we need to do is that the first argument is what you want to display. In our case, it's the video. And then the second, third, fourth, and fifth arguments are going to be the top left corner of where we want to display it, and then the width and the height. So it's going to be 0, 0, width and height. All right. And as you can see here, it is not the mirror image, right? But because we're, we want it to be interactive and more intuitive, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to flip the video and we can do that quite easily by coming to this function right here and then put in the second argument flipped and then true. And just like that, the video is now flipped. Next, we're going to work with the ML5 library. And the very first thing that you need to do is that you need to import the library onto the sketch. So let's go back to the ML5 website. So come down here. What you need is that you need this line of code here. So you can just copy and paste. And where are we going to paste it? We're going to go to index.html. And then right here, we can just copy and paste. And now, we import the library onto our sketch. All right, so let's go back to sketch.js. The next thing we need to do is we need to declare a variable. Let's call it hand pose. And then we're going to preload this model by using a function preload. And then we're going to set hand post to the model inside the ML5 library. So we need to put in ML5 dot hand post. Now let's click run. All right, it seems like there are no errors as we don't see any errors messages, but it doesn't seem like it's detecting anything yet. And that is because we have not connected the video from the webcam to the model. So what we want to do is that we want to write a function called detect start. So we're going to do hand pose dot detect start. And then we're going to provide the video as a source for the model to detect. And then let's click run. All right, now it gives us an error that says a callback function argument is required for detect start. So we actually need to write another function. This function, what it does is that it's going to hold the data of the results that we get from the model. And we need to pass that in as a second argument to this function right here. So that's what we're going to do next. So let's call function got hands and then results. And then how about we print out the results and we're going to put in got hands as the second arguments in here. 
All right. All right, so when it's not detecting anything, you can see that it is just an empty array. Now it's detecting one hand. You can see it's detecting one hand. Now it's detecting two hands. All right, so there are two objects. So let's look at those. So if we come up here, you can see that it is an object. And inside this object, there are a bunch of different things here, right? So the key points are the 21 key points that has the X and Y coordinates of each of the points on your fingers. And then there are a bunch of different other things, key points, 3D, wrist, thumb, CMC. You can play around with all of these data. But what I'm gonna use for this example is this right here, key points. And there are a total of 21 points. So let's start with that. I'm going to actually come here and then set an array called hands. And then instead of printing out results, we're going to set hands to the results here. And then inside draw, how about we just go through all of these points. So let's start with a nested for loop. So for let i equals to zero, i less than hands dot length, i plus plus. So as you can see here, it detects one or two hands, right? So this is the hands array. And then for let j equals to zero, j less than hands of i dot key points, right? We want to use key points. Key points of j dot length, j plus plus. Then how about I set a variable called key points, key point equals to this whole thing, hands of i dot key points of j. And then let's draw each of the points out at key point of x, key point of y, and then let's give it a size of 10. And how about we color it yellow? Nope. <laughs> what did it do wrong? Ah, we don't need J here, right? It's just key points length, and this will be 21. I think. Let's try it. Yay! Okay, but do you notice that <laughs> our video is flipped, but the results that are returned are not flipped. So let's flip that. So what we need to do is that we need to pass in the argument flipped, same thing as this, inside the model here. So just do flipped true. And then I also want to add no stroke here. Yay. Okay. So now both the video and the results that are returned are flipped. Next, how about we actually draw out instead of the ellipse here, let's do text. And then how about the J value at location key point dot X and key point dot Y. And I also want to draw out another piece of information, which is I, and then we will maybe just draw it a little bit to the left. All right, let's try that. All right, so you can see here that all of the I and J values are up here. Hand number one, hand number two. If I take this away, then this becomes hand number one. All right, this is hand number two. And the two numbers we're gonna be using are actually eight here, the index finger, and four, which is the thumbs. And there are actually many different ways that you can actually detect these two fingers. As you can see, when we print out the array hands, there are many different types of information that you can use, but I'm going to be using the information from the key points array. Then I'm going to write an if statement that says if hands dot length is greater than zero, meaning that it detects either of my hand. Then I'm going to set a variable called index and set it equals to hands of zero dot key points 
of eight. And then thumb will be hands of zero dot key points of four. And as you can see here, because I'm only detecting just one hand, I mean, it can detect two hands, but I'm only setting index and thumb to just one hand. That means that you can only work with one hand at a time, but you can change this based on what you want. And then how about now, we just draw the text out. And we're going to draw the word index at location of index.x and index.y. And then text thumb at thumb.x and then thumb dot y and then let's do no fill and then give it a stroke of how about green all right index and thumb and then <laughs> once the other hand comes then it just take over maybe all right it just depends on which one it detect but it doesn't detect both now that we know how to use the ML5 library to detect the thumb and the index fingers, let's work on the magnets. So I'm going to go to a separate sketch. I'm going to declare a few variables starting with the text. So let's call it T and it's going to be a string called hello. And then how about we set X and Y location. And these are going to be a random value between zero and width. And Y is going to be a random value between zero and height. And then we're just going to display a text of t at location x and y. All right. Now, the x and y location is actually at the bottom left corner of this text. So we want to change that as well to be at the middle. So what we can do is that we can use a function called text aligned and then put center, comma, center. We can also change the size and also the font of this text. So let's start with the font. Come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, and then click upload file. And then this is where you're going to drag the font file inside. Once your font is uploaded, you want to come here, declare a variable called font, and then also using a preload function, we're going to preload this font onto the sketch by setting font to be equals to a function load font. And then inside the load font function, you want to put in the name of the font file. So in my case, it is outfit-regular.ttf and make sure you put it inside a quotation mark. So outfit-regular.ttf. All right, and then all you need to do is come down here, set function text font to be font. All right, so now we have a different font. And then we also want a different size. So let's call it size. And then how about we set size to be close to 35. And we can do text size here to be size. All right, so now it's bigger. We can't really see that actually the text is written in the middle of this bounding box. So we're going to also create a variable called bounding box inside setup here. Let's call it bbox. And then you want to set it to a method inside the font class called text bounds. So you need to do font.text bounds. Then you want to put in four arguments. The first one is text, which is t, hello. And then the second and third are the x and y coordinate of the middle point, which is x and y. And then you want to put in the size, which is size. And then with this, we can just print out bbox. You can see that it has four different values here, x and y, and then height and width. So now what I want to do is that I want to actually set another variable called post for position. And post is actually going to be a vector. And a vector is essentially an object that can hold two to three values. We're going to use it to hold two values, which is the x and y location of the bounding box. And you might be wondering, but Pat, we already have X and Y location here already, but we're going to be moving this around. So I want to set it as position, and then we can change it over time inside the draw function. So create vector of bbox.x and bbox.y. And then we are going to set two more. 
width and height and we're going to set width to be equals to b box dot w and then height to be equals to b box dot h all right and then now we want to be drawing the text at post dot x post dot y and we also want to draw out this bounding box so rect at post dot x post dot y and then post dot w and then post dot h there's a problem rick was expecting a number for the third argument oh it's just width and height oh in this case i guess we don't need to do text aligned Uh, we also want to set the rect mode to be equals to center. And also, we don't need to set the text size here because we already set the text size of the box here, I think. Uh, it seems like the size of the bounding box and the size of the font are not 100% correlated. So you can play around with the size. So how about we do size divided by 3? No, 2. All right, the last piece that I want to do is also to rotate this piece of magnet. So all I want to do is now using a function called rotate. And we're going to rotate by an angle. What angle? So let's declare angle. And how about we set angle as a random value between 0 and 2 pi? Ooh, where did our text go? So the rotate function actually rotates around an origin point. And right now, the origin point is at 0, 0 here. So what we can do to fix this is actually translate use the translate function to translate the origin point to post dot x comma post dot y and then we can do zero comma zero here instead and here all right now let's put this inside a class so let's come to this arrow here click the plus sign and then click create file let's call it magnet.js then before we get started go to index.html and then come to this line of code here then we're going to copy and paste and then change the name to the name of your new javascript file and this is how we integrate a new javascript file into the program now we're ready to write class go to magnet.js write the word class and then magnet inside the constructor function what do we need let's go back here we're gonna need all of this. So change let to this. So this dot t will be a text. Let's call it hello. And then we need this dot x, which is going to be a random value between zero and width. This dot y will be a random value between zero and height. And then I'm going to delete these two for now. We'll set it later. We, we actually need font and also size actually should come back here. And we don't need these two anymore. And then we're going to copy these and put it inside the constructor function as well. So this dot angle will be a random value between zero and two pi. Right, and then we can delete this, and then this dot b box will be equals to font dot text bounds. This will be this dot t, this dot x, this dot y, and then size is the global variable set at thirty five. This dot pose is going to be a vector, and now this dot w will be this dot b box. Dot w and then this dot h will be this dot b box dot h then now let's write a method called display and display is basically going to display the rectangle and the text 
right? And then make sure you put this dot on everything here. And yeah, let's try to create one magnet object. So let's call it M and then M is going to be a new magnet object. And then we're going to call the display method. Yay. All right, and then now let's do num set it equals to five and then change this m to an array called magnets and then we're going to use a for loop that goes from i equals to zero to i less than num i plus plus then we're going to create a bunch of magnets object we need a for loop here as well and then we're going to call the display method on all of the magnets object hmm why do we only see one? Oh, we see two now and that is because we forgot two important functions let's go back to magnet.js when we use transformation functions in this case translate and rotate we need to use the two functions push and pop if we want to return back to the default values which is the origin point at the top left corner of the canvas and the rotate angle at zero so we're gonna put in push push saves all of these transformations and then we need pop to return it back to the original default settings with this we fix the issue before we move forward how about i just create a string of text let's do tech magnets and then let's call it hello hi sweet and then my name, Pat Fira. <laughs> and then instead of just displaying hello, we can just randomly pick a value from here using a random function, and then just put in the array text magnets. All right. Now, before we go back to make this work with the hand positions, how about we actually just use our mouse locations? What we want to do is how about we create another method called touch and then what it's going to do is that it's going to take in two parameters x and y which are going to be the mouse locations now i want to write a conditional statement that says if mouse is pressed and dist from mouse is less than how about this dot width divided by two then let's set the color to be red else we're going to set this color to be white so what is this dot c so let's set this dot c to be equals to white originally and then we're going to fill this rectangle with this color but for the text let's do no fill and then let's set the stroke to black as it is right now then what is this from mouse? This from mouse is a variable that I need to write. So this from mouse is going to be a distance between the point in the middle of this bounding box and the X and Y location of the mouse. So I can actually find that distance using a function called dist. And this takes in a total of four arguments, the two points at which we want to find the distance in between. So it is going to be this dot post.x, this.post.y, and then mouse x and mouse y, right? Yeah, let's try that. Let's go back to sketch.js and then also call magnets of i dot touch, and then x and y is mouse x and mouse y. All right, so now when I click it and I'm inside this piece here, then it turns red. As you can see here, when I click here, it does turn red. And that is because I set the conditional statement to say is that turn red when the distance is less than width divided by two. And I do that just because to give it a little bit of a buffer room, but you can change to make it more accurate. 
All right, but now it only changes the color, but I also want it to move with the mouse. So what we can do is we can just set this.post.x to be equal to mouse x, this.post.y to be equal to mouse y. And actually, I want the field to be zero and no stroke. All right. Yay. We're ready to put it with the previous sketch. A few moments later. All right, so I have integrated the two sketches together. So let me just quickly walk through what I did. So don't forget to first also integrate this magnet JavaScript file into the program, right? Didn't do anything, just copy and paste the magnet JavaScript file. And inside sketch here, because we had two preload functions, one for each sketch, I just combined it. So now we preloading the font and also we preloading the model. And I actually forgot to upload my font file. So let's do that now, all right. And then as you can see here inside setup, we have the first part for detecting the video and loading the machine learning model. And then the second part is to create the magnet objects. Then inside draw, we have the part where we display the video and detect the index and thumb positions. And then we have this, which is drawing the magnets. All right, and if I click run here, all right, so we have this thumb here, then we have this, but they're not doing anything just yet. And that is because, <laughs> but it still detects my mouse location. All right, so that's the last piece. How do we make sure that when we pinch, then it actually drag these pieces of text? All right. So what we need is we need to go back to magnet.js and then we need to modify this touch function here. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually, instead of just putting in X and Y as the parameters here, I'm going to do thumb X, thumb Y, and then index X and index Y. And I'm going to create another variable called distance between fingers. And this is going to be the distance between the two fingers. So using the function called dist again, and we're going to put in these four parameters here. So inside this if statement, instead of mouse is pressed, I want to check if this between fingers is less than a certain amount. Let's do 40. And this values will be depending on the distance you are from the camera and how sensitive you want the pinching action to be. Instead of saying this to mouse X and mouse Y, I can set it to the location of my thumb or my index fingers, but actually I want it to be the distance that is in the middle of these two fingers. I'm going to create a variable called finger X and this is going to be the distance between these two fingers, the x location. So we're going to subtract thumb x with index x. And this could return a negative value, so I'm going to use absolute to turn it to a positive value. And I want to add it to the minimum, the minimum of these two values. So let's do minimum between thumb x and index x. And we're going to do the same thing for y. And then we're going to set this dot finger x here. And then this dot finger y. And I just want to make sure that we calculate this right. So I'm also going to draw it here. I'm going to put it outside of these functions and then let's just do ellipse this dot finger x this dot finger y let's do a size of 10 fill it with the color red <laughs> that was a lot of stuff so maybe something is not correct distance was expecting a number no. 
oh so we need four values right so we need to go back to sketch.js and then inside here it's not mouse x mouse y it is index.x no thumb and then index i guess it doesn't matter but let's just do it in the same order thumb.x thumb.y index.x and then index.y thumb is not defined uh, we want it to be inside this if statement all right nope it's trying something <laughs> it's not working so let's go back to magnet.js ah distance from mouse we are not doing distance from mouse anymore so distance from fingers is this.post.x and then this.post.y and then this mouse x mouse y will have to be these right so we actually want to put this before we calculate here and then this will be this dot finger x and then this dot finger y okay <laughs> oh and make sure you change the name here as well Did you see that it didn't display it didn't display anything if my finger was not detecting it so we actually need to change that inside sketch here we only want it to call this touch method when the hand is detected but actually to draw it we actually want it to be outside of this if statement so this display so we don't need this. Then we're going to draw out all of the magnets that are actually on the screen. So I think this should work now. Let's see. All right. This is pretty fun. I think there's so much that you can still play around with this. What if you use your hand motion to actually like rotate the piece, right? And how about this one? Seems like once they're all clumped together, I can't really separate them anymore. How can you do it to separate those? All right. I can play around with this for a while. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial because I had a lot of fun playing around with it. And I encourage you to go to the ML5 website and play around with the other models as well. Give this one a try.